Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where today we are going to be talking about some stuff. Oh, JH, thank you for this, man. I appreciate it. I was pulling mail out of my mailbox. There were some Christmas cards in there that I had between some junk mail and I didn't even know they were there until about two days ago. Thank you so much for that. That was nice of you to do that. And again, your envelopes, chef's kiss, my friend. Very, very nice. I'm trying to not just be in my kitchen. So if you watched the video I did about my plan for 2024, I don't know why that took so long to fucking do. I will put that here um, if I remember to do so. But I talked to you guys about I'm going to be doing a series of videos that hopefully will help you with your work and with your writing. And not only that, but like what happens with your writing after the fact. Like, what are you going to do with your writing for you to be successful? Because a lot of you write all the fucking time. The problem that we run into is what the fuck do you do with it afterwards? Like, the writing itself makes you feel good, makes you feel like you accomplished something. But because there is no what now with your stuff you feel like you're not excelling. You feel like you're not um, getting to that next level kind of thing. And so that's what this is going to kind of be about. The other thing with all of this is that I, myself, have been for the last few months going through some deep, dark, blues shit, okay? That has not been a fucking secret, all right? So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking with you guys about is a lot of what I need to fucking do to get um, my shit taken care of. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking to you guys about is stuff that you're not going through alone. I'm going through this. Like in a different way, I'm going through it. But this stuff is universal when it comes to writing because one of the problems I'm having if I could be frank and honest with you guys here, since we're all friends and shit, is that when I get in the dark, deep blues, you know, I have a really hard time getting my work done. And not so much the writing, as much as all the shit that comes after, which is kind of what we're going to be kind of focusing on here. You can get away with writing a poem or two and then go, well, you know, I didn't get a lot done today, but I finished a poem or two. So I feel pretty good about that. But now what? But if you were writing a novel, if you were working on a short story, if you are putting together like a big nonfiction thing, like hitting this wall of like depression and self-loathing and all this other shit completely takes you out of the game. You know, and a lot of you who make plans, you're like, I'm going to put out a book this year and I'm going to self-publish it. I'm going to put it on Amazon. I'm going to send my manuscript out to agents and publishers, blah, 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 blah. You say all this shit, but when you either get the blues or life happens and you don't do those things, you feel failure. Like in every other walk of life that has nothing to do with art, especially art that you do mainly by yourself. When you hit that failure, you're usually like, oh shit, I didn't do this. I gotta do it right now. But for artists, what we do is we hit that wall and then we like just revel in it. And we're like, oh man, I fucked up. I fucked up. Well, that's that. Screwed the pooch this time. And you just sit in this. We all do it. And when I say you, I mean me too. Like we just sit in that. Okay. And that's not healthy. That's not great. Let's not fucking do that. In order to figure out what the fuck it is 
that is happening, we have to figure out why this is happening and how to fix this thing so we can move on and either finish that book or send that manuscript out or just fucking create and then figure out what to do next. So there are a couple ways this goes and it comes down to the fact that we just focus on our failures. We focus on the past. We focus on what had just happened and we don't look ahead. And some of you might be going, well, you know, no shit, Sherlock. That's fucking brilliant. Like, here's a fucking trophy and shit. But if you actually thought about the thoughts you have when these things come up, when like, oh, you know, like, were you going to put that book out? You're suddenly, you don't think about like, well, yes, you think about I was shit. I was, I was going to do that thing. And that becomes the focal point of your whole existence. The fact that you were going to do something and then that didn't fucking happen. Okay. There are quite a few different analogies we can use to help illustrate this. Um, but I heard one the other day that was pretty good. So we're going to use this. When you're in your car, okay, and you're going somewhere, your windshield is like the size of the fucking car, okay? It's as wide as your goddamn automobile, right? But we have, like, mirrors. We have our side view and we have our rear view mirrors and stuff. And those are only, like, this big, Okay. And when something is that small, it's there for you to glance into and like recalibrate if that's what you have to do. But this whole fucking windshield in front of you, that's where you're going. That's where you are. And that's where like the road is going to take you as long as you're pushing forward and you're still fucking moving your rear view mirror that's just there to fucking look at for a second and make sure there's no fucking cops behind you you know what i'm saying so what i feel like a lot of us do is we will start staring in the rear view mirror and either start pining over it or like we're going to get into the things we see in that mirror in other videos. But we start worrying about it to the point where not only have we slowed the car down, but sometimes we have completely stopped the car. Sometimes our car is in fucking park. And I say this a lot when um, I have talks with a lot of you. It's easier to move a car that's in motion than it is to move a car that's in park. So let me say that again because because uh, trash truck, you know what I'm saying? So it's easier to move a car that's in motion than it is to move a car that's in park. So even if you're driving down the wrong road, like you took a wrong turn and you're driving, you can easily turn that car around and come back down or change course and take another road and get back to the road you're supposed to be on. If your car is in park, if the emergency brake is pulled, it's hard to get that car moving again unless you start the car, take the car out of park, take off the emergency brake and start actually moving. But for a lot of people, they put their car in park and they pull the brake and they're like, oh, wow, I'm stuck. And so then they get out and they push the car that's in park with the brake on. And they're like trying really hard and nothing's happening. And they're like, <gasps> and they're like, well, shit, you know, I tried. I tried to get out of this muck and it's on fucking solid fucking asphalt and shit. I tried to get out of it, but, you know, can't fucking do it. Here we are. I don't know what else to do. Okay. I guess I'll just wait for AAA didn't call them, don't have cell service, whatever, they'll show up. Somebody's bound to come down this road and help me out of this fucking problem, okay? 
that's what a lot of us do all the fucking time. It, it just is. So, like, being in some sort of forward movement is always easier to fix than doing not that thing. Wow, that was a stupid way to say that. But what I'm getting at is, if we're using the windshield versus rear view mirror analogy, we need to obviously not stare in the rear view mirror. It's okay to glance at to make sure nothing happened and no one's behind you and the cherries aren't spinning and the popo ain't coming, you know, because we all know that's what rear view mirrors are for to make sure the fucking cops aren't behind you when you're fucking going 20 miles over the speed limit. So what I want to kind of throw at you guys right now in this first little section of us spending way too much time looking at our failures and dwelling on our failures and dwelling on our past is that think about the project that you've been working on or the project that you think you're supposed to be doing right now that you have told yourself this is the project i'm supposed to be doing that you're having a hard time accomplishing okay look at that and ask yourself is this really the time the place to do this is this project really that important and like if you have to do a pro and con list do a pro and con list and then ask yourself, is there anything else I can do in this new year of 20,024? That's not the year, sorry, 2024. Is there another project I can work on right now that I feel better about, that doesn't have me being dragged through the swamp of my past, that I could just get done and feel good about finishing something and then feel good about submitting that or publishing that? Is there anything that I can do now to give me a little victory so I can start focusing through the windshield and not into the fucking rear view mirror? Figure out if there's any project that you can work on right now that you feel like you can finish and publish however you want to do that and have it be something fresh that you're not constantly thinking about, oh man, this was supposed to be done last year. My life was supposed to be in a totally different place. Like, let's just fuck all that shit off. Like, this is right now. This is the new year. Everyone likes to have something happen on the new year. Change fucking course and focus forward and figure out if there's anything that you can do. And if there is, fucking jump into that as soon as you feel that excitement run with it and just fucking move that is my biggest recommendation to everybody because that feeling of excitement from inspiration is so rare and it's so fucking important and when those things happen like really just do not put those on the back burner and if you want to write novels just try to fucking just try to fucking hit some short stories right now. Just finish some amazing shit. Like have some wins in January. You know what I'm saying? Keep buying my books, and if you don't know how to do it, send me an email. I hate mountwallgmail.com. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.